Here's a creative way to show the level of chromatic saturation in Bach's Invention No. 14 in B-flat major. I'm tapping the rhythm on my lap, and for all of the diatonic notes, my hands are open. For the chromatic notes, I've got them in a fist. Bach uses all 12 of the chromatic pitches here, except for D-flat. So this idea of chromatic saturation in box music was first presented to me in a doctoral theory class at Manhattan School of Music, and ever since then I've kept it as one of my methods of practice. Not that it helps with piano technique, but I find it useful as a reminder to pay close attention, i.e. listen for, chromatic passages. Now these I generally interpret as contributing to heightened musical intensity, as opposed to notes of the diatonic scale, or home key, in this case, B-flat major. 
I adjust my touch and tone, generally speaking, so as to bring out moments of chromaticism, which can also be helpful to sing. And as I mentioned at the beginning, invention number 14 uses 11 out of the 12 notes of the chromatic scale. D flat is the omitted note. I've gathered uh, some data here <laughs> for all 15 of the two-part inventions and arranged them in a chart showing with a red check mark uh, the notes that are present in the piece. And then in black text, uh, we have letters indicating which notes have been omitted. Uh, now you can see many of these inventions do use all 12 of the chromatic pitches. These include inventions number 4, 6, 9, 11, 12, 13, and 15. Invention number 10 uses the least number of chromatic pitches. As well, we can see that the most commonly omitted notes from the chromatic scale are the 4th, 2nd, 9th, and 11th notes. So, for example, in the key of C major, the pitches E flat, C sharp, A flat, and B flat would be the most likely to get omitted. Of course, certain notes such as the tonic, subdominant, and nominant are not omitted as these are pillars of tonal music. Chromatically speaking, <laughs> this little invention number 14 is pretty tame. I mean, you saw I made very few fists. <laughs> uh, but if we look at, say, fugue number 24 in B minor from book one of the Well-Tempered Clavier, we can see just how much more chromatic this piece is. The frequency of chromaticism here is quite intense, and a good player will be mindful of this. For fun, <laughs> I took 12 colored pencils and I attached pitch name tags. <laughs> I'll show you the arrangement of colors, as it were, for each of the 15 inventions. So number one, you see, has no D sharps. Number two has no C sharps. Number three has no Fs. Number four uses all 12 pitches. Number five has no G flats. Number six uses all 12 pitches. Number seven has no Fs or Ds. Number eight has no G sharps. Number nine uses all 12 pitches. Number 10 has no G sharps, A sharps, or D sharps. Number 11 uses all 12 pitches. Number 12 uses all 12 pitches. Number 13 <laughs> uses all 12 pitches. Number 14 has no D flats. And number 15 uses all 12 pitches. And just as a comparison, let's take invention number 8 in F major, where we find the bulk of chromaticism appearing in the middle of the piece. I've marked it with a red post-it. And here's the music. You can see the chromatic notes, those not part of the F major scale, circled in red. And these, as we saw, appear largely in the middle of the piece, where the musical drama is at its height. Chromaticism signals musical tension and development. The farther away from the home key, the more satisfying is the ultimate return. Try to listen for and bring out these moments at your piano. So I hope this gives you some new things to consider at the piano and <laughs> that it was fun to watch. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon for more performances of Bach's music and practice tips. Take care. Bye-bye.